my name is Denise Deneen and this is Holistic Happenings. Uh, thank you for joining me today on my Zoom interview with Tara Robinson. And uh, this is just the beginning of a series that I'm exploring the mental and emotional health of our uh, middle um, school children. And um, because of the quarantine and COVID-19, um, and Tara Robinson is a middle school coordinator at McDuffie's in Granby, Massachusetts. And thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Denise, for having me. I appreciate it. Yes. Um, so you are a middle school coordinator at McDuffie's. Can you tell me a little bit about what that entails? Sure. Um, I've worked with middle schoolers for um, about 10, 12 years. And at McDuffie, my role is really to help support uh, middle school as a community. So we are a top heavy school, meaning that the bulk of our enrollment is all upper school students. Right. We're pretty small at the middle school level, but we like to say, you know, we are small but mighty. It is my yeah. job to help make sure that those students all have a voice. I connect with teachers to make sure that they're getting all that they need. Um, and then I liaison with parents to make sure that they're understanding what's happening at this time and, and try to make sure that everyone's on the same team and we have a really strong positive community vibe which has been challenging in this new uh, environment for sure to say the least right um so you have six seventh and eighth graders how many students do you have in all do you know we were at 33 i'm pretty sure right now 33. that's you, you make it sound so you know easy but to be a liaison between the teachers um the students and the parents it's it's quite uh, a feat in itself it's it's a lot of work um and i know that um you are really whenever i send an email to you you're right there to answer any of my questions so it's kind of a, it's a 24 7 type of thing for you um, and yeah. I'm wondering how um, this has changed, um, if any, if it's the workload is even um, more exhausting. Well, there's definitely a lot more components because, you know, I've always been a, a working parent. Um, and now I'm a, a parent who is working um, and, and trying to, to balance between my own family needs and, and what's going on here at home and then recognizing that there's all that and more going on with the families of my students. Um, I also teach three classes. So in addition to my administrative load, I'm, I'm teaching classes and working with those students and those families. Um, but I really want for families to feel like they can connect to me. Um, you know, students are really fortunate that they have an advisor that they can connect to, our teachers yeah. are really available, but I wanna try to help make sure there's a, a constant and someone that's there um, just trying to facilitate all the communication that needs to take place. Right. And I, I find it very interesting that um, with the middle school coordinator, it's it's such a unique um, time with this age group. And there's challenges that come with that, even on the best of times, um, mm -hmm. never mind during a pandemic. Um, and the social uh, needs of uh, this age group um, you are very aware of um, because you see them every day in the halls like you said um, so there is some concern as a parent um, on my end um, if there's a piece that we're missing here it, which is a huge piece for them because it's a developmental um, part of this age group isn't it the, the socialization, socialization you mean socialization part absolutely um, this is, um, I've also had a background in, in Montessori, and Montessori, Maria Montessori would call this the sensitive time period for socialization, mm -hmm. that within that age of um, 12 through 18, specifically, this is when their peers are super important, and they're trying to create their own identity, and they're basing that on feedback from their peers, and and while there's certainly a lot of effort um, and there's access to connect to your peers remotely, it's really different. And there's a whole different level of, of truth that goes on when what you're sharing is all via social media or video or text. Mm -hmm. um, so that adds a whole other level of complication to it. Um, and, and then all of the 
family stress and uncertainty, so much that's going on that kids are trying to internalize and process at this point to then have to worry about what their friends are thinking or doing adds a whole other layer too. Right. And, and like you said, it, there is that whole dynamic of um, being quarantined with your, your parents mm -hmm. you know, or your siblings um, this whole time. Um, and it's a stressor. Um, have you had any children um, or parents? Um, I know there's advisors and you have, um, you know, the psychiatrist and you are not that, but um, because you have such a, um, a, a unique uh, availability to this age group and you're, you get a whole picture of a puzzle because you're, you're getting the story of the parent and you're getting the story of the teachers. And um, is there... Um, Anyone that's coming to you with some concerns? Are, are people reaching out? Families reaching out? Yeah, fortunately, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that we're being made aware of challenges. Um, we meet with our advisees uh, regularly and talk to students directly that way. And then I meet with all the middle school advisors, so I'm getting kind of their feel for what's happening with their students. Right. Um, we are still having regular deans meetings, as we call them, um, where the school psychologist and the academic support and the academic dean and the middle school dean and the dean of boarding and all these people wow. come in together and we talk about kids and, and red flags and what we're hearing from, um, from parents. And so there's a really supportive network there. Um, there are a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations that are happening with students and there are some really, you know, um, concerned friends who will, who will contact me and say, you know, so-and-so oh. is kind of down um, and we try to check in that way. So I certainly don't pretend that we have the full picture of everything that's going on, but there's definitely um, a lot of ways that we're trying to, to understand what's happening at home and, and avenues for people to reach us and to share concerns. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, there's a huge learning curve for even the teachers and all of you during this time. Um, and, and you are all dealing with your own um, crises during this too. Um, uh, being at home and, and working with um, like your, uh, have a, a, a son that's five, right? Um, so those are, you're trying to incorporate all of those things too. So it's um, a lot of patience on, on both ends. Um, are you finding that when, is there, is there anything that's gonna come out of this that you think that's gonna change things like a lot for you in, in the course of your work or it's not ever gonna be the same or there's something that, um, oh, well, this is interesting how this worked. We might incorporate this or any changes in that, in that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's hard for us to tell, um, you know, what's going to happen at the other end of this, especially when we don't know how long this is going to be, you know, is this just a, a stepping stone along the way and we'll look back at this and say, oh, remember those few weeks where we had to deal with this, right. or, you know, remember when this really changed the, the pedagogy of education. Right. Um, I think that there are certainly things that we can take away from this that will be positive. I think that we've had to learn, um, you know, new things about balance uh, that maybe we forgot um, or that we didn't have to face. Um, I think that teachers are certainly realizing all the different many uh, resources that are available and it's had to it's shaken up teaching a little bit. Sometimes when you're teaching the same thing year after year, um, veteran teachers, it becomes routine, it becomes stale. And now when you can't just take out that document that you've always used or teach the same way, you right. realize, oh my gosh, there's all these new new things that we can do. So that's certainly right. a right. positive outcome. Right, um, right. And hopefully it's going to help to strengthen our community. I know right now sometimes we feel stretched thin and we feel like our community is lacking because we're not in contact, but I'm learning so much more about my students and their families and their homes and you know what else is going on in the world it's easy, especially at a school like McDuffie, where we try to focus so much on community at the school. And we have- um, well, you, have check, you have borders, so. Yeah, we have a boarding yeah. population. So we have a lot of kids who that really is their world. Yeah. It's sometimes easy to forget that there's a whole other world out there. And, and now we're really being forced to face it, that 
kids are coming to school and they had to leave all this stuff behind, all these other stresses and worries and maybe exciting things and whatnot. And, and now they're in it and they're submersed in it. And we have to figure out how to address that. And, and we get a fuller picture of people. Yeah. Um, for better or for worse, we're seeing more of what, what's going on in people's whole lives. Um, not just that window. Right, there's an extra layer there, isn't there? And uh, there's that closeness and, um, you know, and, and the kids are seeing the teachers more human, humanized, mm -hmm. right? Um, and hearing the dogs or, you know, the, the children or, you know, seeing you in your home environment. And um, I think that is one of the positive things. Um, they're not feeling so isolated that way. Um, and luckily, um, I feel with Matthew's schooling, he's got classes every day, so he's busy, and he's got a, he's got a quite a, a workload. And um, I, as an parent, um, it's a it's a different kind of a different spin on things and being more engaged um, and not just relying so much on maybe um, it's going to be done at school, right? So it's it's made me a little bit more um, interactive. Um, and, and, and seeing how um, the different platforms that he has to check. Um, so this has changed things for me as a parent, definitely. Yeah, I think that there's, a, you know, there's some of that kind of give and take and, and back and forth between what we you know, expect can be done at home versus what really can be done at home and what we were doing at school and then modifying that. Um, and, and right now, I think that's one of the biggest challenges that teachers are facing is that balance of trying to give the kids enough work that, or enough meaningful work that they are able to engage and continue on and lessons have purpose and their structure and routine, but recognizing that for some kids, like that is not a priority right now and they're overwhelmed and they feel like they're falling behind. And for other kids, they're starving for work and they need some focus and they need some purpose. Um, and every good teacher tries to differentiate. And in the classroom, you know, we, we've been practicing that for so long, we can differentiate and we can vary instruction, but at least you have the constant of everybody being in the classroom and everybody having those resources and having that same environment. And now, right. you know, you're spreading it out into right. 10, 15 different homes, different time zones, even different uh, True. technology. I mean, it's, it's a lot to try to balance. Yes. Yeah. And there's anxiety in every, and every child is going to uh, deal with that anxiety um, very, very differently. Um, and Matthew's kind of a laid back kind of kid. And, um, you know, thankfully uh, he's had a lot of changes um, in, his, in his world. Um, so this is another layer, isn't it? And I believe that the structure is really important um, and that um, they're able to connect with their friends at school. That's um, really huge. And then seeing the teachers, seeing their faces or hearing their voices. And not to treat this like it's a vacation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's you can't go either way, right? You can't treat yeah. this like a vacation, but oh, you right. can't treat this like school. You know, this is not True. the same thing. So That's again, true. try and find that that right. right spot in between where it's it's enough but not too much, and it's the right stuff at the right time. Um, and I think that what I'm trying to do is I've also been in addition to classes. I've been trying to organize just open middle school Zoom sessions like this. So yes, yes. Um, at least once a week, we all meet together, whoever's available. It's an open drop-in session. We talk, people show off their Legos or their pets or their siblings. We've been doing virtual um, breakout rooms or escape rooms and puzzles. Oh, that's cool. That was what we did today. And so I think that there's just that need for uh, socialization. Yeah. But I think kids, appreciate some kind of a purpose or a structure because they can organize a zoom session on their own time and some of them do there are some kids who have taken initiative on that but to say this is a time this is a place we're going to do something we're all together um i think that that's valuable too yeah yeah i i i, I truly believe um uh this is giving them um some autonomy too um in a in a in a kind of a safe environment 
and this is the age that they're 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 feeling like they they want to go out and 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 be and do things on their own but you know they're still you know hanging back and, and, and a little scared um so this is a good platform maybe for that if you need to find a positive from it um they're you know still able to do that um now what are the teachers and, and what are you doing for your own self-care um is to keep your your sanity through all of this um you know i think that the most important thing you know i say like balance i feel like balance is going to be my, my yeah. trade yeah. word true um, but it's important to unplug the same thing that i want for the kids to do you know despite all of this um, we have to find times to unplug because so much of what we're doing now is tied into this. Um, fortunately, right? Um, not that there's ever a good time for a global pandemic, but it's getting warmer, right? It's we can go outside, um, yeah. trying to take walks, trying to make time to do things with the family. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I'm going to come out of this having learned a foreign language and made every Pinterest recipe yeah. in the book, but. I'm trying to find something, something that we can do. Um, I've been teaching my son card games. So we've been playing card games as a family. Nice. Our regular weekly uh, movie night has uh, certainly upped its frequency. And so yeah. we're working our way through the Disney vault. Yeah. Um, and I think that as far as, you know, our network of teachers, we're really trying to, to keep that human aspect of it. So there's a lot more check-ins you know there's a lot of group texts going on there was a a virtual happy hour there's um you know as much as we are missing that in the hall how are you doing let's grab a coffee chat um i'm texting with people i'm, I'm calling people i'm having these face-to-face -face video chats where we're just able to say Phew, you know this was going on today and then how is your day going? i know it's true it's um we see how much we enjoy uh, interacting with people after all this, right? It's like, usually I'm like, oh, I don't want to be, uh, again, I need a break. And this is, um, has changed that. Um, I, have a, I have a question as a parent for myself um, with um, trying to keep, um, you know, Matthew on top of doing his work and, um, I've, I, I've kept it pretty regimented, um, but I'm, I'm finding that, you know, he's doing some of the work, you know, work and I think it's done. And then he's, you know, Oh, he missed that one piece. So, um, it's, it's, it's really, um, that, that part of giving them that autonomy, autonomy, and then having that responsibility of taking care of their own work. Um, so that's my struggle during during this. Um, that, that's what was going on, right? In during the school year, during the time, this is exactly when parents start to loosen up the reins and they want their kids to be more responsible and take autonomy and take ownership. And kids are starting to learn how to advocate for themselves. That's one of the things that I really want to uh, to push onto middle 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 school students yeah. is that sense of advocacy advocacy yeah. how do you advocate for yourself and yeah. it's Thank hard you. because they're just learning that skill and now we're like really pushing it on them right because yeah. they've got all these different teachers they don't have that same support network where all their teachers are going to see them in the hallway are going to be able to just walk by them and say remember this remember that right um, and parents it's hard once you've started to let go you don't want to collapse on top of them again right right so i think that I'm feeling like I've like, oh my gosh, how much did I slip on before? Because I thought I was pretty much on top of it. And I don't know if it's because of the platform or because he's here, but um, I'm feeling like I'm losing a grip, like some grip on it. And it's hard because we can't, um, I feel like I'm often in a difficult position because as the, the middle school coordinator, every progress report that's written, um, you know, letters that want to go out to parents, they come through me first. And then I, 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 um, <laughs> um, I organize them and I try to put a nice little subheading of a, hey, here's something. You put a little nice spin on it. <laughs> you need to work for them. <laughs> I want to validate, you know, the teachers have these concerns and they're doing their due diligence and they want to reach out. 
And at yeah. the same time, I'm like, this is the fourth one that just, he's having a bad day. So can we just see what happens tomorrow? And, you know, rather than inundate a parent with all four. Yeah. And so yeah. one of the things I want for parents to realize is that, you know, they've got to take what's coming through to them with a grain of salt too. Yes. You know, if, if you're true. getting this, it's not a, it's not yeah. a judgment. It's not yeah. a, a failure. It's saying yeah. here, we want you to have all the information yes. and then you can say, you know what? I get it we're trying something new, we're trying yeah. a new organizational system, or it's been a rough week, or we were up late watching a movie, yeah. cool. You know, whatever it is, right. just know that you have the information, we wanna pass it on to you, and then yeah. you can parent how you parent, and your yeah. kids gotta learn how they learn, and there's still that element of, this is the age and the time where they're supposed to fail and figure it out, and granted, this is a whole I agree with that. way of failing, right? But it's still yeah. something that we want for them to come out on the other side having learned from. Right. Nothing, nothing in their life, nothing in their academic future is hinging on their seventh grade year. Yes, true. So Absolutely. I, I would never want to, to use the phrase, it doesn't matter, because I think it matters, right? It matters in your development of character and in strategy and in being an advocate but this is not make or break for your college admissions. This is not even going on to your, your transcript. This is not your GPA. This is a time where you figure out your strengths, your weaknesses, what works for you, what doesn't, how to prioritize. Um, And that's what I I really think people are looking at differently during this time. Yeah. All these growing pains, right? Yeah. It's figuring it out. Yeah, it is. It's, it is definitely. And, um, when Maddie started at McDuffie's, I did find that I'm like, wow, um, because I wasn't used to um, so many people being on top of, you know, everything. Uh, well, you know, I mean, it's just different anyways. And um, I'm like, oh, and so I felt like there was something that like, oh, am I, I'm doing wrong and, um, or I'm not on top of it, of his work and, now that um, I see how that works, it's, uh, you know, not as, um, you know, I'm taking it with a grain of salt. Yeah, don't, you don't internalize it, right? We need to figure no, out, right. you yeah. know, where, where he might need more support. Right. Um, and, and then where, you know, he's got to figure this out. And that's, that's part of what this time is for. But yeah. if we don't share that information, right, then you don't know. You don't know that he was struggling and we needed to switch something up or Absolutely. that parent doesn't know that their, their kid is missing this work and they're telling them a different story. We want to say, here's the information. Right. Let's figure out, you know, what, what plan, what course is, is warranted. Right, right. Well, this has been uh, very interesting and um, there's quite a lot to um, to explore with um the children of this um, age group um, during the pandemic. Um, and I, I really value all of your, your insight and um, help during this time. Um, and I thank you for all that you do. Um, you're amazing. And um, so this is a part of a series. So there's going to be some other interviews and um yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, really amazed by all the teachers and what they're doing. And um, yeah, and, and Maddie and I have gotten closer with his schoolwork. And um, I've learned a little bit about him and, and, um, and his fears and anxiety around the school work and um, just around um, the, the social piece of it, too. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. And then hopefully, you know, he's learning those things about himself too. And that's, that's something that we can take away and hope that people are going to come out more uh, stronger, positive that they're learning more about themselves and, and what yes. works for them and then, you know, who to turn to when they need support. And hopefully that they're, they're reaching out for those because they're out there, at least through McDuffie and what we're trying to offer. There's definitely places and people to talk to. Right. Absolutely. And so I'll, I'll put at the end of um, this interview um, some links, and you had posted them and emails to all of the families of the middle school um, that you're the coordinator of. And so um, I'll get that out there too, because I thought it was really wonderful information that you you shared. So that's important. All right. Well, I want to thank you again, and. Uh, So this is the end of our show.